What are you doing, Sue? Finishing my breakfast, getting ready to go. I noticed you're uh, kind of dressed a little different today. What's uh, what's going on there? Got my hiking boots on. We are going to the Catwalk Recreation Area in New Mexico, Glen Glenwood, New Mexico. Walking through a canyon on a catwalk. I looked up the elevation at Glenwood. It's about 4,800 and we're about 5,900. Sue was getting ready here. She's She made our breakfast. You'll notice how yummy it is. <laughs> it's a freaking rice cake with Yum. with almond, almond butter on and God knows what that is. It's a prune compote. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's keeps the... Your, keeps your day moving. Come yep, on. that's the thing I want to eat before I go on a trail <laughs> with no bathrooms. Oh. But what she did was she packed us a nice lunch that we'll have in the car uh either before or after i guess depending upon how hungry yeah, you are plenty of water yep snacks yep you look like you're ready look well at that. i know what? you know and and i am ready i what i do is i do things like before we go even though we woke up this morning and we had our furnace on it was cold when you leave you got to put your air conditioning on so that you don't come back and it's like 800 degrees in here so i got it set for 76 sometime during the morning when the transition changes that will kick in but here's the thing that i was the most uh, prepared for this morning and this is a pro tip you'll recall and maybe in this video sue isn't going to talk about it but this is the ruffle bag and you'll see how unbelievably animatedly inflated this is. And this is what happens when you climb in elevations between different places that you're touring. Well, I mean, as unbelievable as this looks, uh, I can feel it affecting me when I walk around. You'll remember if you watched our channel for a while, when I went to Yellowstone, I was out of breath a lot at that elevation, whatever it is. And I remember it as slightly less than what we're at now. I think Yellowstone is at the elevation where we're gonna go to Glenwood. So I'm trying to be prepared for today's activities. Now when we're on the catwalk, depending upon how um, crowded it is, uh, we're either always gonna have to wear our masks or mask on, mask off when we're passing people. So when you're wearing this and you're trying to breathe and you're having trouble breathing in the first place you got to have every trick in the book so this is a pro tip for you guys not so much the girls is that this morning not only did i shave and get that nice but i also shaved and got my <laughs> nose hairs Serious. and just to be extra careful i even got the ear just in case that somehow plays into you it uh, but now i'm not going to have any venturi action venturi action i'm not going to have anything blocking my uh, uh cubic feet per minute displacement on me breathing here so i'm all set so that's that's the first pro tip today i'm sure there's going to be plenty others Mark, did you do the pro trip I've been nagging you about forever? Yes, I did try to drink some water. Drink this water, lots of water. He does not drink yeah. enough water and he ends up with headaches and things. Yeah. So, in this elevation, you need to drink water. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. All right, good. All right. Well, Love you me. can't start your day any better than that. Loving kiss from the wife. Here we're leaving the Les Combs Winery. Uh, it was a harvest host. We actually have a video that we did on that stay. We are driving about an hour and a half to the Silver City KOA, which we selected because it's positioned in between two attractions at the Gila National Forest that we wanted to go to, one being a cliff dwellers uh, attraction and the other one being the Gila catwalks that we have uh, shown in this video. So the KOA was ready for us with a touchless check-in and here the camp host is escorting us to our spot. You see all this dust blowing up. That's what happens when you have a diesel pusher with a side radiator and you instantly become not the most uh, welcomed person in the campground, especially if they just wash their rig because you're blowing all the dust around. You can see how perfectly manicured all these gravel spots were and it didn't take long after we pulled in we leveled up 
hooked up and we were ready to go. And the very next morning, we jumped into the Honda and took off. Up to the left here, you're gonna actually see the whole reason that these catwalks existed. And that was to provide the piping and the water for this ore crushing mill operation. And all of these catwalks were built initially just to keep that pipe maintained and to help construct it. So it's Friday, October 23rd, and we are at the, uh, in the uh, Gila National Forest. I think Barb and Cindy said Gila. Gila. And um, we are actually going on the catwalk. Uh, it's a recreational trail. And it is what it is. It's called a catwalk. So we'll explain a little bit more as we go. So um, they, it t took a while to get over here from Silver City, about an hour and a half. And uh, they have a, a trail that leads right into it. And there is a vault toilet, which we're patiently waiting on because they're actually cleaning it right now. So it's got a nice entrance into the uh, walking area. There we've got Mark waiting on us. As every good YouTuber knows, you got to always make sure that you wait along long enough until they start an engine up like that, you know. Uh, so the first half of the trail looks like we're here, the parking area, welcome center, and I think we're going to walk here and then... We'll get the catwalk, yeah, right? Yeah, this, this I, I'm thinking the catwalk goes this far, and at this point, the Chan Man is going to stay here, and then Sue will continue on. They really have a nice uh, picnic area here, too. And perhaps we'll partake in it when we're done, because we did pack a lunch. So this is a national park, or at least it uh, qualifies when you have the senior pass or the access pass, the uh, America the Beautiful pass. And because it's called an interagency lifetime pass, you can see here that the day use fee of $3. Fees are used to manage and service this fee, $3 per vehicle. The golden passes and the interagency passes cover this fee. So. They say that they want you to display a valid pass when parked. So I Xerox this both sides and I'm gonna have it sitting on a dashboard. Well, this area actually started out as a mining area for gold and silver. And it attracted uh, people from all over, taking the gold and the silver. And it was a hard and dangerous life. And they said that wagons would bear uh, heavy loads of the ore and were drawn up by teams up on the hill and sometimes it'd be a team of like 24 horses. It would take uh, take many hours just for it to get to the mill. It's a hard life. So over by the parking lot there's an, the remnants of the ore crusher that used to be here and this was uh, a heavy steam powered ore crusher and they would actually pound uh, rocks and ore, turn it into powder. And they would actually take the ore by wagonfuls up to the top of the, the hill and just shoot, shove it down chutes into the mill. And you can see here where it would actually come up and down here is the remnants of it. And right here is actually um, the parking lot. Sounds like a hard life. But they had some good stuff too. So there was a mining camp. Um, and many of the mining towns in the area had uh, some luxuries, like a general store. Um, a dance hall, at least one saloon, of course, and laundry. And used to be home to about 200 people until uh, Graham was abandoned in 1913. And then there's Silver City. That's where we're uh, parked right now with the rig. That's where the, the ore was refined and put into bullions, cast into bars. And that they were just too heavy to steal something uh, the miners learned the hard way. 
Hauling the silver bars to, to Silver City was often a muddy, week-long adventure. Now, to get there now, it takes maybe a, an hour. And now we're off to check out the trail and find out what is the catwalk all about. This river here is just got a little piddle of water through it right now. But when it starts raining, they said it turns into a foaming, roaring canyon of water if there's a fair amount of rain that has fallen. So you can see how it starts out pretty darn level, well maintained. And actually this is wheelchair accessible. the Conservation Corps back in 1930. Yeah, that's right. I'm sure it is. You can always tell by these rock walls, I swear. So here they're showing you that the easy route is to the right if you want to, if you're in a wheelchair especially, but moderate is straight ahead. It's got 11 to 14 percent sloped, dirt and paved surface, few guard lines, narrow trails. So it's kind of nice that you have the choice. Do you want to go easy or do you want a little challenge? And this is why Sue is our navigator when we're driving the rig. I literally looked at this sign and because the arrow was pointing to the bridge Aww. and I saw moderate and elevation, I'm like, oh my God, I want to go across there, but I don't want to, but I'm not making that up. <laughs> so, so far, we have the place to ourselves, which is great. Take a little gander this way, see what we can see. Oh my God, look who's down there. Marco, keep walking. It's nice how they have all this built up to keep the uh, falling rocks off the path. I actually kind of like that look too. Now it looks like we're entering the catwalk area. The civil engineering uh, uh, fun the center for, for engineers. 2012, this was all rebuilt because everything got all wiped out from the water. Oh well, yeah, there's a, there's a flash flood in 2012. Canyon. I love this stuff, Mark. It's cool how it just winds around the canyon and you can uh, hear the water down below. Well, and we got to hand it to the uh, national parks, you know, to preserve this, to preserve this ledge. I mean, they've dug all these supports in here to buttress this up. Oh. You listen to the water. So here's probably the first civil engineering candy store playground catwalk that we're coming to. You can see that there's a fairly healthy canyon wall right in front of it. And we walk out onto this thing. How cool is that? The stream is relatively civilized today, but you can see how the water has just carved away 
all of that rock over all the years. I really do think we hit it right. Friday, end of October, probably around noon-ish right now, and it's like we have this whole place to ourselves. It's wonderful. It just keeps going on and on. This is beautiful. You can see how deep into the canyon we are. Can you imagine the volume of water that can flow through this canyon if it's fed enough to really make a go of it? And I'm so impressed on the effort and the money that was spent to put something like this in so that for years to come, people can still enjoy it like we are. I mean, this thing is a cantilever calculation classic. Okay, so now check this out. This pipeline was actually built twice. You see an 18 inch pipe here, but in the beginning, it was actually put in at a four inch pipe. So all that work had to be redone when they discovered they needed more water. And obviously, OSHA didn't exist at the time, so, you know, there was some safety issues, I'm sure, uh, maintaining and working on it. This picture you see here was back when they rebuilt this catwalk in 2012, uh, the very one that we're walking on right now. It is really a testament to the park service that they went ahead and saw the value of this catwalk uh, to preserve it for folks like us to visit, to not only see the history on how things were back in the day during mining, but it's just such a beautiful canyon. And to make it accessible for uh, you know folks that have special needs and for folks like uh, myself that uh, you know, are older and want to see something like this, but yet don't want to be climbing around in the rocks. It's uh, was just fantastic. When I was walking through here with the camera, my initial uh, plan was to walk the whole length of this once I got to an area where it was spectacular like this and I thought well you know I don't want to bore the audience so I'll probably uh, you know run it at two times speed maybe three times speed and uh, tried to make an effort to walk as steady as I could but I can tell you that as I edited it and I looked at it when it was sped up it just seemed like I'd be cheating you guys not seeing everything uh, as crystal clear and as smooth as it was in real life. A while back I had mentioned on that more modern picture showing the crew that actually had hard hats on that this thing was rebuilt in 2012 and that was because they had a really bad flash flood in this area and it just mangled everything up. So they made the decision this time around that they were going to build this thing as bomb proof as they could. And if you know anything about structural uh, design and everything, you look at the uh, epoxy fasteners and the grout and all of the beams and everything they put in. So hopefully this will stand the test of time when this canyon fills with water again someday. We really got lucky on the day we visited this catwalk because it's pretty obvious that we have the place to ourselves. So the enormity of it and how big it is uh, can be appreciated better actually when it's empty and then because it's empty you can take shots like this 
where I can back up for a second and I can shoot down and you can see the length of this thing and how impressive it is. One of the things that Sue and I really like to do is we like to study and take a moment to try to drift back in time what it must have been like to build something like this knowing how difficult and how large the challenge was ahead of them. And uh, that was twofold for me because at this point, as I watched Sue effortlessly walk over the slippery rocks there, that would probably take me 10 minutes to get across there. I was thinking, okay, am I done on my part of the trip? But I decided no, I needed more. So this is off the cat trail and you can see it's a little bit more rocky, sandy, I think Mark would do it if he had his walking sticks. Oh, look at him. He's coming to join me. There actually are a number of waterfalls here. And we have seen people, not today, but on other videos where they're actually in the water. You start to lose uh, the scale on how big this place is until you turn around and you see this big rock and you look back where you just were, and it it's really is grand. We have a perfect temperature today. So a lot of times, I'll opt for the more difficult trails. You can see I got the shoes. We got a lot of tough terrain here, so come on, Sue. We got miles and miles yet to go. <laughs> really? You can keep up with me. Right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. That was good, hon. That was rough. He's got a little better over here, honey. Oh my God. <laughs> he survived the rugged terrain. <laughs> so obviously beyond that um, end of the catwalk, no wheelchairs here. There's stairs and very rough um, pads. It's a long way down there. Wow, looks like we're going to the upper part of the canyon. Okay, I'm leaving Mark behind. He's turning around as I'm climbing up a little bit further. They say it goes uh, maybe not quite a half mile. I'm not sure if I'll go that far, but there's a little waterfall. Oh my God, there's a stalker. Honey, if you're <laughs> going to tell me you're leaving me behind, I have to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my bad. I'm leaving him walking behind. <laughs> you don't have to come here if you're, right. if you're not sure of yourself here. I'm going to turn around. All right. Yeah, I don't want to be like the potato chip bag, inflated. No, oh my god, that's right. All right, and I will continue. Onward. 
Where'd I go? So they do make sure you stay on the, the trail. It's the first one I saw that actually shows that one is closed. So we'll head down this way. I do have to say, as I'm heading back down, it would be nice to have Mark's walking stick. So, pro tip, if you're going to go beyond the catwalk, you might want to take some walking sticks because of the dirt is kind of loose, um, rocks, and going down the hills, you might want that support. I know I wouldn't mind it right now. I think I'm going to try to take this log across. Or you know what, I've got my boots on, I'll just walk. Ooh, no problem. So we have noticed some people just taking the lower path along the waterway and you do come in and out from the water. We've seen people walking through the water. Got these little bridges. I'm going to assume they put these here, not in Mother Nature. So if you're more adventurous, this would be the more adventurous route to go. Okay, not too good that time. Bum, bum, bum. All right, we got it. We got it. We're spread around. It's a little too wobbly. That's good. All right, leap of faith. Boom, boom, bam. Made it. Back we go. So uh, what did you just end up doing here? <clears throat> Eating my chocolate and ginger. Ah. We had a lovely lunch, yeah, as we, we always do decided, after. Decided to spare our after audience time. so they didn't watch me eat the sandwich. <laughs> so this is the parking lot. And there we have the remnants of the mill that actually kind of got this whole area started and well known. Have enough footage for this segment. Let's get going. <laughs> I guess that guess that's my cue. Brrr.